everyone, happy Sunday. I'm Jared Staten, I'm the Sunday School President, and we're very excited to meet with you again soon in Sunday School, as soon as we're able to. In the meantime, though, I have a few thoughts from this week's Come Follow Me reading that I'd like to share with you. As you know, this week we were to read Mosiah chapter 25 through 28. And basically what's going on during these chapters is that Alma is organizing the church and helping the future rising generation to, including his son, to gain a testimony and to become good, faithful members of the church. We read in Mosiah chapter 26, verses 1 and 3, there were many of the rising generation that could not understand the words of King Benjamin. Their hearts were hardened. So the people in Alma's, Alma the senior's generation, they had been there for King Benjamin. Uh, the people who were his age had been around for King Benjamin and had been taught and converted by him earlier in the book of Mosiah. But their, their sons and daughters were not around for that, and so they didn't have the same conversion as their parents. So one big message for me this week is that you can't force your conversion on anyone else. So our, my parents, before I had a testimony, my parents did, but they couldn't force that on me. They had to help me to gain my own testimony personally. And likewise, when Brianna and I, Brianna's my wife, when Brianna and I have kids, we um, won't be able to force our testimonies on our kids either. We'll just need to help them learn those things on their own. That's because conversion is a personal thing. In Mosiah chapter 27, verse 14, we see that Alma the, Alma the elder prayed for his son. Instead of forcing him to believe or to, to take his father's testimony, he prayed for his son that he mightest be brought to the knowledge of the truth. And so he prayed and asked that God could help his son to be guided to the truth for himself so that he could understand the truth himself and be converted himself instead of having his father's testimony forced on him. Later on in that chapter, uh, we see that God made it happen, not necessarily in the way that Alma would have imagined. I, I imagine that Alma the, senior, Alma the senior would rather not have had his son uh, be unconscious for so long and be, have that scary experience, but that's how God answered his prayer, and that's how God worked out Alma, the um, Alma's son, his conversion. Um, and so that's another lesson to me that God will answer our prayers in the way that we ultimately will be best. We maybe won't understand in advance, or maybe we won't even understand when while it happens. Um, but ultimately, the way He answers our prayer will be best. And finally, in Mosiah chapter 27, verse 25, Alma the, Jun Alma, um, the younger was now converted, and he says, All mankind must be born again, yea, born of God, being redeemed of God, becoming his sons and daughters. So Alma the younger now has this great testimony, not because of his father's testimony directly, but because of his father's prayers on his behalf. Alma the younger had this, had this wonderful experience and was converted on his own, um, and that, that became a much more powerful testimony and much more powerful experience for him as he went on to be a missionary in the, in the chapters that we'll see coming soon than if his father had just forced his testimony on him. Now these have been my thoughts from this week's uh, Come Follow Me reading, and we'll try and get some thoughts to you each week for the next couple of weeks. I hope these ideas can spark some conversation between you and your spouse and your other family members. Keep studying the scriptures, and we're looking forward to meeting with you soon in Sunday school, as soon as we're able to.